How's it going guys? Welcome to Shop Foreman Garage, working with World Car Auto Group. Today we are doing two recalls on this 2015 Mazda 3. Recalls for emissions uh, ECU program and recall for rear brake caliper and uh, we'll get to that right now. Okay, let's get into these recalls. This is the first recall right here. It is 8915K um, emissions recall for the 14 through 15 Mazda 3 and the 13 through 16 CX-5. And this is the VIN breakdown. As always, I will put this information in the description box below so you can see uh, if your vehicle uh, falls under it, uh, it is an older recall actually and um, This is what it Basically it talks about is um, There is an emissions recall uh, campaign um, Where uh, we basically we need to reprogram the PCM in these specific vehicles um, on cert certain subject vehicles and proper control logic um, may cause a uh, powertrain control module, the PCM, to wrongly detect misfires when accelerating at high engine uh, RPMs, more than 5,500 RPMs, and uh, with wide open throttle, of course, in cold weather condition below 32 degrees. Under such conditions, a malfunction indicator light may flash and the PCM uh, may fall into a fail safe mode and can restrict the throttle. Basically, it's going into limp mode. And uh, this, um, of course, um, you know, driving in South Central Texas um, at uh, over 5,500 RPMs with the uh, conditions below 32 degrees are um, highly unlikely. Uh, maybe that's why it took so long for this customer to bring this vehicle in to get this uh, recall done. They were probably told, hey, you had a recall, so go on and go in. They probably have not had any problems with this at all. Uh, moving on to the next recall. Um, this is for uh, mechanical rear brake um, sticking concern. And here's the breakdown for that. Uh, and I will put this in the description box below too for Mazda 3 and Mazda 6. And the, basically what we're doing is we're replacing the um, seal. So what happens is there's a seal that goes on the back of the rear calipers and it has this little lever for the emergency brake and water can intrude into that seal right there and start the rust. Um, the, um, the worm gear, the end of the worm gear that operates the uh, rear brakes and um, if that rust then comes apart, you know, it, it can either come apart or it can seize and then your rear brakes, um, emergency brake will get stuck on or might not work at all. And uh, here are the parts right here. Um, it, I don't know if you can see that. Here's, these are the part numbers in case you're interested the Mazda 6 and the Mazda 3, the left-hand side. And here are the part numbers for the right-hand side set. And uh, these uh, are what these kits look like. They got a little bit of grease in them and they have the seal. And there's this uh, little piece that we're gonna put in there that looks like a top hat kind of thing. I'll show it to you. And it stops water from intruding through that seal. And uh, we're gonna knock this out. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the emissions recall. That's just the ECU reprogram. Uh, we've done that before. We're going to do, do it through the IDS and we'll supply power to the battery. And it's just a, a program uh, and that's it. It shouldn't take that long. And of course the next one, we need to get the car up on the lift and uh, you don't even have to take the rear tires off. Um, you can pull those levers off and, um, and put that seal in there. It's not that big of a deal. Now when we get in there, if we find that the 
the um, piece that the, the lever goes on is all rusted up and stuff, we may need to replace the rear caliper. So it's kind of an inspection and then if everything's okay, put this lever back on. If it has just a little tiny bit of rust, then that's fine. Uh, there's a special grease we're gonna put in there. So let's get to it. Okay, so we have the vehicle hooked up already to the battery charger because we're going to do a ECU reprogram so we always have to make sure we got uh, proper power and I already have the uh, IDS hooked up to the vehicle and I have um, it communicating so uh, this is going to be uh, pretty quick uh, what I'm going to do is go into module programming right there and it wants to know what what VIN I have. Usually uh, Z on third digit, 17 JMZ, one YZ. Um, let me see what I have. I don't know if you can see that. I have JMZB. So it is going to be this second one right here, JMZ. So I'm gonna select that. Go to module programming and the PCM. And uh, it's just uh, making sure that I'm verifying that uh, it has a proper VIN and it does. There's the VIN right there and I hit yes, that is correct. And uh, there's a possibility that um, this could have already been done if at one time or whatever the customer had come in or to another dealer or whatever for some kind of issue that needed a PCM reprogram, this program could have already been put in there. So um, this thing is telling me that I am having uh, problems with my internet right now, internet connection. Hmm. And we are current software version not been updated oh great okay so it this is something that every once in a while I'll run into um, it says a later calibration is available do you want to program it it says current version uh, software version uh, service tool has not been updated in 25 days well that's wrong because I am at the current version so it's given me some some weird error but it is showing the current level and the change to level right there so I will be attempting to do this program Calibration was not found. You want to look on the network? Yes, hopefully I do have internet to look on the network. Locating files. Uh, this is just making sure that I have the battery hooked up and I sure do. Set the ignition off. Where are we gonna turn the ignition off? And hit okay. Now turn the ignition on. I'm gonna turn the ignition back on, hit that twice. Hit okay. And erase, erase procedure in progress. So it is starting to do its, its thing. Okay, that is it. Hit 
shifter, turn the ignition off. Hit OK. And it is completely done. So after doing something like this, we will always, always go in and, um, and um, clear any codes. So it can set codes just from doing um, from doing updates. Anytime that you do an update, it will automatically, um, well, not automatically, but sometimes it'll set codes in other systems because it isolates that one system. So in this case, it's isolating the PCM from other modules like the TCM and you know stuff like that. And um, because of that, it um, it will set codes in uh, in those systems. So we need to go in and check codes in all systems and then clear any of those codes that may have set. So uh, that's uh, pretty much what I'm doing right now. It's uh, reading codes. And uh, when those uh, codes come up or whatever, I'll clear them and then we're done with this. And uh, let's move on to the rear brake uh, caliper lever thingy thing, campaign recall thing. Okay, let's go. Okay, for the um, rear brake, kit campaign or recall uh, we need to loosen um, any adjustment this is kind of loose right now it's not too bad I mean because I pull it up it stops right there it's not coming all the way up but uh, we need to loosen this cable because uh, this is uh, we're gonna be pulling this cable off of those levers back there so we need to take this apart and there is a little Is a little snap right here you take off so we can pull this off of here and we're gonna have to pull this up so let me let me get this set up pull this out just like that Connect this connector right here. Get that out of the way. And right here, this is what we're gonna loosen right there. So if you look in here, you can see that this is already hanging kind of loose. So we might not even need to, but we're gonna uh, loosen it anyway. And then once we're done, we're gonna adjust it back. We're gonna adjust it back properly. So. I'm going to go ahead and loosen this up. So that's good enough. That's really loose. So if you're looking at this thing, just flapping, you know, I mean, it's real loose. So um, now uh, let's move on to um, get the car on the lift and uh, get into the back there and uh, start tearing it apart. Okay, these are the tools that we're going to, well, tools that we're going to need for doing this recall. My tool tray is completely just stacked with tools after uh, doing, removing the engine from the fiber the other day. So, yeah, that's, uh, that is removed. Um, if you haven't seen that um, series, uh, the fiber formula, um, uh, drag and drive car uh, and the progress on it um, the, I'll put a link up in the top right here you can go check it out uh, I got the engine out of that thing the other day uh, so check it out but um, so the tools that we're gonna need for this we're gonna need this um, 90 degree uh, needle nose pliers we're gonna need um, needle nose vice grips that just uh, help me get this stuff out of the way uh, this uh, pry bar, a uh, smaller pry bar, a, somewhere around here is a 12 millimeter wrench. I need to find the 12 millimeter, that's a 10. So 12 millimeter wrench. And this right here, this is a special tool um, for doing this uh, recall. And I will show you how this thing works. And uh, let me let me get this together and let's start tearing it apart. So these are what these kits look like. And this right here 
is marked as RH for right hand. And the Mazda 3s, they're usually marked right hand, left hand. The ones for the Mazda 6s, they're not. But you can tell which one they are by um, if uh, the, the lever matches up with the one that you take off. So you make sure you get both and the levers are on opposite sides. Um, so that way you know. So we got the lever in there. We got a new nut. We have this seal, this boot. Turn this on. So this boot right here. This uh, uh, is a, um, I call it a top hat because it looks kind of like a top hat to me, you know, with a hole in it, of course. But uh, this uh, is going to uh, keep this from uh, getting any water into this side right here. So, and then uh, here's a little bag of uh, special grease that we're gonna be uh, putting into this right here before we put it on. So let's get knocking this out. Okay, this is what we're dealing with, this uh, little rubber seal over here. And we gotta get this lever off. We're gonna replace this lever, the seal, and then we're gonna be putting a um, provision or a um, little um, spacer that uh, stops water from getting into that seal there. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take this, um, we need to take this spring off right here. So I'm gonna use this, grab this right here, and I'm just gonna take it out just like that. All right, set that aside. My 12 millimeter wrench on here and loosen this up. <clears throat> that off of there okay we're gonna get this nut out and we're gonna save on this nut for right now because we're gonna reuse it um, I think we're gonna reuse it well we'll see um, so we need to get this lever off of here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these two pry bars and I'm gonna pry up on it I'm gonna get under this forth like that until it comes out. I get that off there like that. And then there's the seal. We pull the seal off. Okay and this is gonna go bye bye. Okay, and then I wanna just kinda clean this, make sure everything's clean, um, make sure there's no rust. I actually see no rust in there at all. Um, and uh, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, so um, we don't have to worry about this. Everything's good, we can go back together with, uh, with everything else. So the first thing we're gonna do is Put that little thing I call a top hat on. This is the piece I was telling you about. It looks like a kind of like a top hat, and I say that because of this little ridge on the bottom right there. And it has this yellow glue in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick this with that ridge part down over top of that. And it's gonna go down just a certain amount. We don't wanna go down all the way, just a certain amount. And this top part above this ridge is where that new seal, let me grab the seal. 
I can get out of the package where the new seal this part of the seal will ride over top of that and that keeps water from getting in there so I need to use this special tool and the inside of this tool and you can see it's got some orange grease in there inside of this tool moves back and forth so I don't know if you can see that so it allows this thing to go all the way down but not push this down too far and so I'm gonna stick this over top of that like that and I'm gonna use the old nut put the old nut on there okay and I forgot there's another special tool we need and that's just a short flathead screwdriver that can go in here and keep uh, that thing from twisting so that'll go right there of course I need to get a wrench on it first and then I'll stick that in there and just hold it in place as it pushes that tool down just like that and not too tight just kind of snug and back it off get that out we don't need that nut anymore and then there it is it's down and there's a an area in this tool right there that look like a groove right there and what that's for is a measurement so I can stick this in here and I should be able to move this back and forth without really lifting it up so it should fit in there and it's just to make sure that I didn't push this thing down too far so that's the whole idea of that piece and it is perfect so um, if it's possible they tell you to kind of clean this this glue off if it comes out of there so it's not that big of a deal clean that off so now we need to go in with the new the new uh, seal or this boot yeah they actually call it a boot they actually call it a boot kit um, but um, I need to get grease in this and I'll show you how I do that okay so I have the boot and the packet of grease and what I did is I just cut the corner off right here so I'm just gonna kind of fold this so I can shoot this grease inside there I just want to fill this thing up with grease all along the inside and we're gonna have grease going everywhere but that's okay as long as we get the grease on the inside and usually this pack is enough for both sides but they give you a package in each in each um, bag so um, yeah that's it's good so uh, let's let's get this on okay so I got my boot filled with grease I stick it on there and then I need to get this boot down into the groove there's a groove down there sometimes I can get it right on sometimes it takes a while nope I got it on but then it came right back off so this is why we fill the thing with grease because it's gonna go everywhere and usually they pop right on and of course this one is gonna fight me okay Nope. All the way around. Come on. Are you kidding me? Okay. Get it on the one side. Hold it on that side and then push it around with the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a pop around. 
around. Usually I can get this thing to pop on right away, but it's, the camera is actually kind of in the way. So yeah, I'm blaming the camera. Okay, so that's that right there. And then what I want to do is twist it to make sure it doesn't come off. Because I've seen um, where they've come back and just doing it in regular inspection, I've seen them pop off and that's not good. So I use a rack so I can grab it, just kind of twist it around and it lets this centerpiece come up and right on the edge of that little top hat thing that I put in there. And then we want to make sure we have some grease up on here because we're going to be uh, pushing on that new lever. Um, everything else we want to just kind of wipe off. Um, right there. Okay, and then we're going to go back with our new lever 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 thingy thing my thing I'm gonna get that on there like that stick this on and I gotta make sure this is pulled all the way down right there that's where we want to want to get it on there So I'm gonna just kind of start it by hand. There's no way I can push this on just with my fingers. But when we turn this, we need to keep this from turning. You know, we need to keep it from doing that. We need to keep it in place so it, so it squishes down onto that shaft like that. So what I do is use, and uh, see how I can get these in without moving the camera. Okay, let me get this set up and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so I have that on there like that and I'm just gonna turn this until it's tight. And you see that, that came off, come on. You gotta be kidding me. Okay. Anyway. Let me get this back on. Okay, maybe I can keep it on this time. I just need to tighten this up just a little bit more. That's pretty much it right there. Now, I'm gonna take it off. Okay, and then, of course, the last thing is to stick the spring back on. Uh, we got the spring. Stick that on here. Come on, wait. Just work with me already. Okay, there it is. That's it. That's one side. That's the way it looks. And um, and that's it. And I'll do the same thing on the other side, and we'll be done. Then we just need to uh, adjust the the brake. Uh, so that's why there's so much slack in this right here, is because we loosened it so we could get these out. So uh, let me get the other side down real quick and then uh, we'll adjust the brake um, properly. Okay, so these are the levers that I was talking about when I was telling you that the, um, the Mazda 6 packages don't say left and right. Um, you could tell that these are complete opposite of each other. So you can just uh, pull the lever out of the package and compare it to the one that's on there and you'll know which side it's on. Uh, of course, you shouldn't have to uh, worry about it. You know, this one says, this is left, has an L on it, and this one has a right, an R right there. So, you can see that. 
Um, shouldn't have to worry about it because the thing is covered under uh, warranty because it is a recall. But if you happen to decide you want to replace something like this on your own vehicle, so uh, that is how you do it. Uh, let's uh, get that the brake lever adjusted properly. Okay, now we need to tighten this up. And just so that you know, I'm, I'm gonna tighten it up. I'm gonna watch this, this lever right here. So if you just wanna do a um, park and brake uh, adjustment on your vehicle, I'm gonna watch this lever. I'm gonna watch it tighten up and then it's gonna start to barely pull this way. That's when I'm gonna stop. See how it barely pulled this way? So it just barely pulled this direction. So now I'm gonna just pull it back and forth a couple times. Make sure that it's not too tight. If this was too tight, it would be dragging. That would be bad. It would just wear the brakes out. So you don't want this to be too tight um, because you'll drag your rear brakes and it'll be you'll basically you'll be driving with your brakes on and it's going to wear out your your rear brake pads. So um, you don't want to do that. Um, so let's get this uh, let's get this back on here. Okay, I'm gonna hook this back up under here. Slide it over the brake lever, lever, lever. Make sure everything pops into place. Slide this down, stick on this snap, and that is it. Good to go. Well, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Uh, thanks for sticking in there and watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And, hey, check out uh, uh, Shop Farmer Garage on uh, Facebook. Uh, there's a link in the description box below. And I will see you in the next one.